thanks to music provider Lick for sponsoring today's episode where we're going to be checking out the new Avada 2, the new features, what we like about it, what we don't like about it, a lot to go over. So let's start with the big camera upgrade. And that is what I've been hoping for, a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor and an F2.8. Design wise, looks a little bit trimmer, looks a little bit sleeker and definitely does feel a little bit lighter weight. I think they said they dropped like 30 grams or something like that. New battery system right here, which is the pinch and it just drops in like that. And check these out, these little hollow cutouts. They said they did this for sound reduction. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire this up and go for the fight. So this is kind of cool. I could actually share a live view to mobile device via Wi-Fi before you have to plug in, right? And then you're tethered to the phone, but now I can wirelessly do it. So I can show you here. I can see you changing your settings and everything. Oh, you can see all that? Yeah. We have four by three aspect ratio. So that's cool. That gives us access to kind of the whole sensor. And this is gonna be really nice if you wanna extract some vertical content out of this, right? And also new FPV controller three. Looks pretty much the same as the previous one, but I noticed that there's no antenna that you have to pop up. It's just built in right here. Not nearly as loud and annoying as it used to be, right? No, it sounds way better. That was the first thing I noticed when you took off. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and change my custom mode over to manual mode. Uh, I'm also gonna to need to turn this off. This is gonna let me go inverted. So now I'm in full manual mode and oh, Actually, the takeoff is actually pretty low on the throttle. I'm at a hover now, so what is that, like a third it feels like? I think so. So that's actually pretty good. I'm gonna punch it. Oh, okay. Honestly, that took off a little bit better than I was expecting it to. Interesting. You know, honestly, I'm uh, pleasantly surprised by the amount of punch that they just had. <gasps> oh, shit. How far is that? It's down there. Oh, how are we gonna get that? We're gonna have to get like a grappling hook or something. There's no way you can go down there. So this is the part I tell you about DJI care. <laughs> we just started this video. It had a lot more power than I was expecting it to. So I got a little excited. Maybe I could try to turtle mode it. Oh, you see? Yeah. It moved. No. We could tether you to the tree. And then you could like repel. I yeah. could repel yeah. down from yeah, yeah, yeah. here. That's what I think. Let's go to REI. <laughs> First thing in the morning, we come back to this spot and go get it from there. So you're telling me that instead of going to the courthouse in the morning to get our marriage license, we're gonna do this instead. Our wedding is in what, two weeks or so? Two weeks. And uh, yeah, I'm just trying to shoot a couple of videos before the wedding so that during the wedding, we're just like, no, ah, I was chilling. We came and video out here uh -huh. to take care of wedding stuff. This video stuff should be stuff that's like on the side. It is on the side. It, side of the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> I love okay, you. okay, that was I a good one. You. Honestly, though, I'm not much of a warranty guy, but when it comes to FPV drones, especially if you plan on flying in manual, hold on, hold on. I don't think the DJI Care works when you just completely lose on the side of the cliff. Don't you have to like mail it in? There's also flyaway coverage. So you, you do have to it's pay more you for it. You crashed it on the side of a cliff. Flew away into a bush. <laughs> flyaway coverage. I think we need to clarify whether that would be under the coverage. So DJI confirmed that this is covered under flyaway coverage, which means we don't have to pay full price for a replacement, but it is still more than if I had something that was damaged and I could send it in for repair. Honestly, with FPV drones, half the fun is getting these kind of risky shots. So DJI care, maybe not a bad idea here, especially since there's no obstacle avoidance sensors, but there are some new sensors on the bottom but it's not for obstacle sensing because uh, we want people to go through the tight spaces uh -huh. if you have the obstacle sensings you are not going to do that right. it's just for uh, position if you fly indoor it's going to be more stable so it definitely seems to fly really locked and stable even when it doesn't have any gps signal anyways there's a drone that needs rescuing so two rei oh you just started a new type of business Drone retrievals? Yeah. They should teach repelling in a part 107 class, don't you think? <laughs> Instead of learning how to read meat cars. Oh, maybe I should tie my shoes first, actually. Your shoes aren't tied? I really should have gotten boots, but we were already kind of over budget. <laughs> Wish me luck. The dang is so slippery. I'd be so dead without this rope. Like, all this is like so loose. Am I close? Another six feet. Six feet all the way over there. Yes, use the stick. Oh, that's a good idea, actually. <laughs> It's in there somewhere. Oh, I see it. Oh my God, I think I got it. Oh, I got Woo! it. Woo. We have made it down to safety. Oh my God, if this Avada 2 still flies, 
I'm gonna be really impressed because it did rain a little bit yesterday too. Here's the drone, totally dead battery, so it must have just like drained itself. Let's see if I put this one in. And oh, look at that. Car is back alive. up. Wow, gimbal's working fine. That's the part I was most worried about. But honestly, can't even tell it's been crashed. The three ways to control this Avada is one, the motion controller. There are some new features of this that we'll test out in a little bit. But at first I was honestly kind of like, man, eh, this motion controller, like just give me one of these. But after I've let a few beginners that have never flown drones before try it out and within minutes, they're already flying around pretty comfortably. So now I get it. And then second is normal mode on this controller, which is going to basically be just like if you're flying a Mavic or a Phantom. Finally, there's manual mode, which is personally what I like to fly in. And it does take a lot of practice just to get it flying. There's simulators to kind of help you out. One of the things I was definitely hoping for is like a pro controller. And this one's definitely nice and compact, but so are the gimbal movements. I don't really have as much fine detail control as a full size. All right, so I have some Rocksteady turned on and I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little bit of flying. They said they've done some improvements to the Rocksteady. On the left is what you see in my goggles. And on the right hand should be the footage, which should be stabilized with the Rocksteady. We still have the option to fly unstabilized so that it stores its gyro data. So we could use third party software like Gyroflow to have a little bit more fine control, but it definitely is convenient when you don't have to run the footage through extra software. So let me just go ahead and just try a couple of different maneuvers and just see how everything stabilizes out. Now I'm gonna try Horizon Steady, and that should just completely level me out. So let me go ahead and do a roll there. It's also worth noting that this isn't available in the four x three mode, only in the 16 by nine, but it should remove any sort of banking, making it look more like a Mavic. I also love that I could just change my camera angle mid-flight instead of having to actually land and physically move it. So far, I am loving the one over 1.3 inch sensor in here. I mean, same size as the Action 4, the Mini 4 Pro, and the Air 3. I mean, it's a proven sensor, so it's nice to get it on here. And compared to the previous Avada, where we just got d like an 8-bit, we now get D-Log-M in 10-bit. So that'll give us the option to shoot flat, give us a little bit more flexibility in post, more access to dynamic range. So I love the hardware, but the Achilles heel is currently, there's no 24 frames per second option yet. Personally, that's gotta be my biggest disappointment with this so far. So I'm just hoping that if we continue to beg and pray to DJI engineers, they'll put that in here in a feature form update. But anyways, to control that shutter speed on this F2.8 lens, I do have some ND filters. So now we have shutter speed control. So now I'm gonna go ahead and try to shoot today's sponsorship entirely on this camera, even when it's not flying. I'm just gonna hold on to it and use it as a ground camera as well. Let's see how it turns out. Hi, I'm Deputy Dylan, here to warn you about a dangerous new habit running rampant on the streets. All right, Karumba, time to bring out the hog. Son, were you just listening to some stock music? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, what's it to you? What are you? The music police? Well, actually, yes, I am. Well, cut me a break. If I used music I really wanted, then this video would get flagged for copyright and get demonetized. Haven't you heard of Licked, where you can go and license top tracks from mainstream artists for your videos? They have millions of tracks to choose from, and the selection keeps growing. So you're telling me we could be listening to some Jack Harlow right now and this video won't get demonetized? I'm gonna give you a link in the description for 50% off your first mainstream track and 14 days free stock music. So next time I see you on these streets, you better be listening to something good like the new Barbie soundtrack. And I'm bad like the Barbie. I'm a dog, but I still want to party. All right, so I'd say the footage came out pretty good considering we shot it on an FPV camera. Monitoring from the goggles actually gave me some flexibility, but biggest challenge was that I shot it on normal field of view to reduce that fisheye distortion, which I think looks better for this use case, but I did underestimate the amount of crop normal field of view does compared to my goggles feed, so I accidentally gave Dylan a haircut in some of the composition, but overall, huge improvement in camera quality. Avada 2. Is that what it's called, Avada 2? Yeah. Okay, and what are these called? 
Goggles three. Goggles three. The only thing that's actually pressed up against your face is this pad up here on your forehead. Yeah, I don't feel the pressure here around my face. Yeah. It's really soft. The cheek pad is actually just like this really soft rubber. Mm -hmm. So they say mm -hmm. it's supposed to help with light leak. It took me a second to get used to it, no, but it's, now it's I actually way like it. better. The remote ID built in now. You got a little cameras okay. up front right there. You hear some creeper come up behind you, like in some bushes, you could just double tap and you look Shut and you can see up. people. That's crazy. Yeah, so you can actually like see us. Yeah. You really like the motion controller? I like the motion controller because of the head tracking. Oh, the head tracking. Yeah. They actually incorporated something called Easy Acro into this thing. Okay. Huh. So almost like, like a manual mode in here. It is also really windy right now, huh? So uh, this will be a good test. It does have that high wind velocity warning right there. It's windy as heck, bro. Yeah. You know what I noticed though right away? Yeah. It's quieter. Head tracking's still here, right? Yeah. Pretty cool. So head tracking basically takes whatever movements you do with your head and basically mirrors that on the drone. But then you're actually flying the aircraft still with the motion controller, right? Yes. I can even fly backwards. Oh, that's so cool. Hit this gap. Watch out. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I think it's time for an easy acro, shall we? Let's do it. 180 drift, fly forward and make sure you have room in front of you. And then you're going to hit the joystick all the way to the left or right. Oh. I guess that could be cool if you're passing up a vehicle or something, right? As you're passing, you hit that real quick. Yeah. Flying in reverse in FPV is hard. Yeah. It is like a pretty advanced skill. Let's gain some elevation for flip now. There's no way really flip. Go ahead and hit it. High velocity wind, unable oh. to perform easy acro. Oh, because of the wind? Because of the wind, yeah. It's really windy. Okay, yeah. so we might have to go to a less windy place. Oh, oh okay, oh, wind oh, velocity oh. winding went away? Yeah, 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 let me do a flip. Oh, you oh, did it! Nice, <laughs> nice. Okay, here we go. Oh. <laughs> it does it all like, let me just flip real quick. No grace, nothing. It's, it's just, just, just a, uh, there, I flip for you. What more do you want? You wanted to flip? I flipped. It actually does it pretty quick because yeah. like as soon as you go upside down, you're going to start flying downwards yeah. unless you have yeah. 3D, which is pretty rare. 3D is basically where the propellers can spin backwards so that it can kind of stay up upside down. That's like a specialty. It's very oh, rare. Okay, I've okay. never flown a 3D okay. drone before. Isn't there that one girl that flies 3D? Yeah, uh, Zo Zoe. I'll put her on the screen. And then accessing the card much easier. It also doesn't interfere with the propellers because before it was up here in the propeller. So if you left it open, it the propellers would just hit it. And also in case you forget your micro SD card, it actually gives you 46 gigs internal. 46? So 46, That's yeah. A lot. For internal, that yeah. is quite a bit. Yeah. This bag came with the Fly More combo. I wonder if we'd make a, a reasonable launch pad since it has a flat top now. Yeah. One of the things I really like about the Vadas is that you could take off like a normal drone and then kind of get it into position and then just hit the pause button. And then now I'm framed up, I can adjust a couple of settings. Always very important to scout all your power lines, right? Got it on D log M, stabilization turned off so I could post stabilize it in gyro flow. Actually, it's not letting me stabilize any of this footage. Gyro flow says that there's no gyro info in this file. And actually looking back on when I turned off Rocksteady, it tells me that there will be gyro information if I'm shooting on the wide field of view for the camera, but I was actually on normal. So that's my fault. I should have put it on wide, but uh, now I'm stuck with unstabilized footage that has no gyro info. So completely unstabilized footage for a few minutes. We're definitely doing a vehicle shoot out here. You know, I can start off up here and just kind of cruise down. The car's coming down this road and then it reveals and then it's like, boom. And then we're just following the car. That would be awesome. Oh guys, you guys are thinking what I'm thinking, right? Consequences are very bad if I make a mistake there. Um, it. DJI care, baby, let's go. The exposure definitely shifted on me. Let me lock my exposure so that it's not shifting around as we go under. So I went ahead and locked the ISO at 100 ISO and let's check it out. Easy. So it's giving me a little notification, battery level low, throttle output reduced. As the battery gets lower, the amount of throttle I need to hover definitely gets a lot higher. So right now, just to hover, I'm probably using about like 65% of my throttle. So if you're gonna do any aggressive flying, you definitely wanna do that at the front end of the battery while you still got all that voltage. But right now, if I just full throttle it, I mean, it can still go. And again, what I'm talking about right now is only really gonna be noticeable in manual mode. I bet you if I go ahead and flick it into like normal mode, the computer's basically doing a lot of the leveling and everything for me. So at this point, I can't even really tell. But man, I feel like I've been on this battery for a good while. Uh, I'm just gonna keep cruising around until it force lands. Battery low, landing automatically. So it's automatically landing at 6%, which, uh, you know, can I force it back up? Okay, I kind of force it back up. So how long was that flight? I'm gonna go ahead and put it up on the screen. It felt like a 
a, a pretty long time actually. 04 mm -hmm. image transmission now gives us more range and just like a more solid connection. But the downside of it is there's some compatibility issues. I know you can't use these goggles for like the DJI 03 air unit and like the previous air units, but DJI told me that they're gonna be doing a firmware update in like a month after release or so, where basically you could use the previous version of the controller and motion controller and goggles to the previous one on this new drone. So you oh, can get the drone okay. by itself. Oh, you don't cool. have to get all the that's stuff. So really that's cool. that's nice at least yeah, that they're yeah. not gonna make you buy everything, everything just for that. But then there's other things with 04, like the Mini 4 Pro and the DJI Air 3 that I guess this can work with. Oh, we could probably get some crazy top speed because I got a tailwind here. 68, 62, 60, 63. Into the wind now. 47, 47, 48, 45, 43. So that's full throttle and manual mode. Let's see, go back the other way again. 67, 67 miles yeah. per hour? 67, oh, 70, oh, 72, 72, 75, 80, 80 oh, 85. Oh, 85. <laughs> oh, snap. I feel like it just caught yeah. like a big gust and it just like, it took you away. Yeah, because yeah. it was like struggling to get past 60 and then just went boom to 80. <laughs> oh man. It's flying in this high wind, but it doesn't like it at all. Like it's quite unhappy. What about the camera and the sensor? Is it still the same? It's better? One over 1.3 inch sensor, but no 24 frames per second. Okay, I'm a, I'm a 30 and a 60 kind of guy. So you don't care? I don't care, yeah. Well, I hate you. Yeah, I know. I care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they made this for me. All Mavics do yeah. 24 frames per that's second. That's probably why well, they don't want to cannibalize into their own market. Is that why? Yeah, that's what it but is. But it's so different. And I get if 24 is too slow for latency, then they can make it 48 frames per second. Like this whole video, I have to decide, is this video going to be 24 or 30? Yeah, yeah. And I usually go on 24 just because I like to incorporate cinematic footage sometimes, and that should be 24. So I just match everything to 24. But now it's like, I have all my tools that are 24, and then I have something that's 30. Sudden, yes. So if I take this 30 frames per second footage and drop it into a 24 project, then one out of every five frames or so gets just cut out you may not notice it in a lot of cases but when you're dealing with like a smooth fluid shot it's just you see the stutter you see a stutter it's like duh, yeah. Duh, yeah. Duh, duh, yeah. and it's like oh i noticed it. this project is 30 frames per second by yeah. the way i would be way more excited about it if it had 24 frames per second so please dj please yeah. give it to us uh, can i charge the battery with the usb input right here looks like you can what is this for this little back thing the knob to huh? tighten it and loosen it yeah oh nice yeah. i like this all right frank's fine Am I already in manual mode? Yeah. Oh, damn. <laughs> you tried to take off like it was a Mavic, huh? Cruising. Oh, shoot. Yeah, nice and easy, oh, nice and easy. Manual? It goes, it goes, it goes. Yeah. It just wants to go. Yeah, it's different than the first one. Oh, this I is so cool. It feels lighter. It feels yeah. way lighter. A lot lighter. Yeah. It feels very floaty, which I really yeah. like. Old school Cinewoops all felt like really heavy. Like you have to like give it a lot of throttle just to stay up. But these new ones, they just kind of like, they're light. Barely touching the sticks as well. Yeah. Yeah, it just wants to go. This is nice. Yeah, this feels much better and it's quieter. And also look at how dark it is. Harry's at 6400 ISO uh -huh. and you're still able to actually like yeah. see pretty decently on yours, right? Yeah, yeah, big improvement, much better. Yeah, like with the old Avada, I feel like around this time, it start becoming hard to see, mm -hmm. right? But with this one over 1.3 inch sensor, you just have much bigger photo sites. You can really just absorb a lot more light and just see what's going on. When I heard that it was gonna have 23 minutes of battery life, I was like, oh, well, they went for battery life and lost performance. So I yeah. thought it was gonna fly worse than the original. Bottom. Yeah, no, I could tell you right now that this controls much better than the original. Way more agility. Yeah, okay, and then if I wanna come in and land. Just hit the pause. The pause button right around. There you go, and it just pauses. Oh, it lands on its own, of course, yeah. yeah. Just throttle down, bam. Overall, everything is better. They still didn't put 24 <laughs> frames per second in it yeah. though, so not everything, you know. <laughs> now, one of the things that some people experience in the original Vada is if you come in hot and then you do a sudden turn, you would get like a dip or a tumble. I wanna see how this handles that. Now, it is important to keep in mind that there are different types of FPV drones from Cinewoops, which this is, and these are designed to fly nice, smooth, and stable, not necessarily designed to fly super aggressively compared to like a race drone or a freestyle drone. There's just a long range, there's cine lifters, and each drone has their pros and cons. Let's try a couple of different aggressive moves here. So let's come in for a dive and just try to bail out. Didn't have to go full throttle on that one yet. Oh, went full throttle there. <laughs> now that it's not as windy, it's handling so much better. The propeller guards are great for safety and all, but it definitely affects aerodynamics. But now let's see if we can get this thing to do that dip. Got some speed here and just a sudden turn around. Okay, yeah, it, it doesn't like doing hard U-turns. So I did a bunch of these hockey stops and most of the time it was fine, but occasionally I'll notice that one side might dip more than it's supposed to. 
Okay, there, it did something. Again, this is only something that happens in fully manual mode. I tried it again in normal and sport mode and it had zero issues. It's actually not unusual for FPV drones to do weird things like this when it gets caught up in its own prop wash or in heavy wind. So I think over the years, I've just tried drawing smoother lines opposed to any sudden breaking. And when it does happen, the more practice you get, the faster you'll be at bringing that nose back up. Now me personally, I wish they went to three and a half inch propellers because that would just eliminate the dip and just fly a bit more stable in high wind conditions. In my experiences, when you go from three inch to three and a half inch, it, it does make the drone bigger. Yes, but it just adds a lot more grip. That would be my personal preference, but I get that a lot of people with the Vada like flying with the motion controller or under normal mode, and they're never really going to see the performance difference really, but they are going to be able to fit through smaller gaps with the three inch propellers. So I could see why they did it, but I'm still pushing for three and a half inch in a Vada three. Come on. But honestly, I have been pretty impressed with how good it flies considering all its circumstances and that max 23 minute battery of course that's in perfect conditions but even with some fairly aggressive flying you're still getting at least 15 which is really crazy for an fpv drone like this as for slow motion we do have 120 frames per second but it is in 2.7k and i guess since 120 is a multiple of 24 this could be a solution to using the vada 2 for 24 frame per second projects but of course that would mean i would still need to compromise on resolution very important every time you set these goggles down don't let the sun just blast into the lenses or else it will burn pixels now i would have to say the biggest benefit that the avada 2 has compared to any other fpv drone is that it's got to be the most headache free experience to get into fpv we actually tried to do a full in-depth guide to get started into fpv we took sam to rotor riot rampage and you got training from some of the best pilots in the world but we kind of stalled out on making that video because we just had to keep adding and adding and adding more things and there's still so much more that needs to be topped before we can really comfortably say, all right, you're ready. Part of me still wants to finish that in-depth FPV guide. I don't know. It just, Maybe it, it should be chapters. It's going to turn into like the Lord of the Rings, you know? Yeah. Like with the Avada, you can generally buy it off the shelf and I'm pretty confident you'll be able to figure everything out. You can always just hit that position hold right there. So if you start freaking out and go like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing, just hit that position hold and all of a sudden it flies like a Mavic. So it's just like such a great feature for when you're not super comfortable in flying yet. Woo! Oh, sh <laughs> I got too excited. I got too excited. One of the things that's also kind of nice is that you could just connect straight to the Avada via Wi-Fi and download the footage straight off of it. That crooked, nice, beautiful footage. But yeah, that's it. Bye. Thanks for watching. And Bye. wish them a happy wedding. Is that what you wish people? A happy wedding? Yeah, wish me a happy wedding. Wish Which th already wish happened by, because by the time this video comes out, it's oh, already okay. over. But wish that we had a good one. We need all the prayers oh, man, because yeah. the weather is not looking good in the forecast. It's the one day <laughs> with like rain. It's like it's like beautiful sunny weather, beautiful, and then just boom, one day. It's cold and rainy and then beautiful weather again. So I don't know. I mean, that's just how weddings work, I guess, right? Like, <laughs> Yeah. All right. See you guys in Vegas. Bye.